welcome back to the second lesson on accretion dilution analysis. So in the first lesson, uh, we outlined all of the deal assumptions uh, that go into building an accretion dilution model. And we're modeling the hypothetical, actually this acquisition did happen, uh, the acquisition of Google made of, of Motorola Mobility. So at this point, we can calculate the company's standalone net income. And then it's just simply the projected earnings per share on a standalone basis times the number of shares the company has outstanding. So Google was expected to earn $25 per share, and it has 310 million shares outstanding for a total net income of $7.75 billion. And we can do the same thing for Motorola. $2 expected earnings per share times 315 million shares outstanding. $630 million. Now, that's net income, and of course net income is after tax. For the purposes of this analysis, we want to calculate everything on a pre-tax basis. So the way to go from net income to a pre-tax income is take net income and divide it by one minus our projected tax rate, and we have that tax rate over here. So uh, before taxes, Google would earn you know, roughly $12.9 billion. Motorola would earn a little over a billion dollars, again, prior to taxes. Now we're simply going to take uh, the two companies' pre-tax income and just combine them. So they would, uh, at this point, earn almost $14 billion dollars pre-tax income. Of course, now we're about to throw in some adjustments and then recalculate taxes. Now, our first adjustment is the interest expense from the new debt Google's going to issue. Google's going to issue $6.3 billion in new debt. It's going to pay 5% interest on that debt. And I'm going to make that a negative by multiplying by a negative one because I want all of my uh, negative, uh, all of my expenses to be negatives and any uh, cost savings to be positive. So 5% on $6.3 billion a year is $315 million in additional interest expense. Our second adjustment, of course, uh, as mentioned, uh, we're allowed to write up the assets of Motorola uh, to their fair market value, but those that write up must depreciate and amortize over time. So that will increase depreciation and amortization by $500,000 a year. And again, I'm making all of my expenses to be negatives. We have to pay the investment bankers, the lawyers, and the accountants. We assume that all those guys are going to charge us about $5 million. And all those deal fees, those advisory fees or expenses incurred. And the debt bankers, we raised $6.3 billion worth of debt. Debt bankers are going to charge us some fees. Those debt underwriting fees are capitalized and then amortized over the life of the debt, resulting in $400,000 additional expenses. Of course, we do believe Google will be able to realize some synergies in this acquisition, and we assumed it was $100 million. Of course, that's a positive, uh, because synergies uh, will increase net income. These other adjustments reduce net income. So at this point, we can calculate pro forma pre-tax income with all of our adjustments in there. So I'm just simply going to sum everything up above it, like so. About $13.7 billion on a pre-tax basis. But... Again, accretion dilution is uh, typically measured on a net income or an earnings per share basis. So we need to calculate net income. So my, I'm going to take my pre-tax income. I'm going to multiply it by 1 minus my tax rate of 40%. So $8.2 billion on a net income basis. And we can calculate the pro forma shares outstanding. Now remember, Google has 310 million shares outstanding already. And it's going to issue an additional 8.4 million shares to help fund this acquisition. Of course, Motorola's shares are going to be acquired. They're no, no longer going to be outstanding. So we simply just take the diluted shares outstanding that Google had prior to the acquisition and then add in those new shares that Google will issue to fund this acquisition. That's 318,400,000 shares. From here, we can calculate the combined company, the pro forma earnings per share, net income, divided by shares outstanding, $25.90. Now, let's go and pull in Google's standalone earnings per share. If you recall, that was $25 from our earlier video. We can see that this deal, again, given our illustrative assumptions and our numbers, this is an accretive transaction. If Google makes this acquisition, its earnings per share will be $25.90, whereas if it doesn't make the acquisition, uh, its EPS will be $0.25. Cents. So this is a creative deal by $0.90. Cents. 
Now, it's also a good idea to calculate accretion dilution on a percentage basis as opposed to per share basis because really and truly the number of shares a company issues and has outstanding is, is arbitrary. So we'll calculate accretion dilution as a percentage as well. So we can either say that this, uh, if this deal happens, of course it did happen, but we're assuming it, we don't know yet. We can, we can say that this deal is accretive by 90 cents or by 3.6%. And that is accretion dilution analysis. Really not too, not too difficult. Now, once the accretion uh, dilution analysis is complete, it's often presented using the, uh, the data table feature in Excel. Uh, since this analysis is done before a deal, it's rooted in assumptions like the offer price, you know, the form of consideration, whether it's you know, stock or cash, and maybe the interest rate on, on the new debt. Uh, the data table presentation in Excel enables analysts you know, to easily change certain assumptions and see how those changes affect accretion dilution. So you can see as we increase the amount of stock we issue and increase the offer price, the deal gets you know, a, a, much worse at 100% stock and a 70% offer price then Google would be a dilutive by 14 cents. So this is a, a really great way uh, actually kind of uh, presenting this data is by using the, the data table feature in Excel. Now this is a brief introduction uh, to the concepts and adjustments underlying accretion dilution analysis and modeling. These are of course just a few of the many issues that come into play when uh, when doing this type of work. Uh, other adjustments you know that we didn't include typically minor but could be major depending on the transaction. Stuff like the uh, the treatment of in-process R&D registration fees for new for new stock refinancing target debt so really and truly we just kind of scratched the surface on accretion dilution analysis but fundamentally this is still the exact same process that you will go through uh, on the job thanks I hope you enjoyed uh, the video and stay tuned for uh, more financial modeling lessons from uh, Wall Street Prep